Um, a lot of times people ask me what to look for when they're deciding to get their very first instrument. So the instrument I play now is a, a 2009 Gibson Master Model built by Dave Harvey. Um, but I got this instrument many years after I started playing. I actually got my very, well, the first mandolin I ever learned to tune on was, uh, it belonged to my great uncle. It was actually an old bowl back tater bug mandolin as we call them back in Tennessee. And that was really what I learned my first couple tunes on and my dad said, well, if you'll stick with it and you decide you really want to play, then we'll get you an instrument of your own. So I did, I feel, fell really in love with it. And um, probably a couple months later, he got me an A model Kentucky mandolin. And it was a great mandolin to start out learning on. And, and then, uh, you know, I just kept getting nicer instruments as I got more and more serious about it because so many people I think believe, well, if I just have the nicest instrument, then that's the ticket to being able to really sound great. You know, so much of it is really about practice and technique and working on those things. And I'm a believer that if those things are strong, you should be able to make even the most inexpensive mandolin sound pretty good. Now it is true, the nicer the instrument, the nicer the, the sound, but all those other things have to be working well. Um, too. <laughs> so start small, find something you like, um, make sure that the action isn't um, too high off the strings. That can be really discouraging for people that are just starting if the instrument's way too hard to play. And by action, I mean how high the strings are off of the fretboard. So you want to make sure that it's low enough that it's, you know, you can make a clean sound. Cool. So this is an instrument that I, I think I first saw Sam Bush play one of these and was like, oh, that's so cool. And, and this is a 1964 Fender Mando caster. Um, and that's kind of the fun thing about old instruments, vintage instruments. Um, I own a few of them and there's something really inspiring about knowing that these instruments have been around much longer than I have and there's something really special just about you know how broken in they are and the way they've aged over the years. Um, so yeah, super fun. Um, it's four string as opposed to eight string. So when I'm playing acoustic mandolin, you can do a little bit of string bending, but not nearly like what you can do on um, a four string where there's like, there's a lot more opportunity to, you know, play with the movement of bending the strings, a uh, lot of sustain with these guys. Um, and, you know, on their own, they sound nice. It's always, personally, when I'm on the road traveling, I'll, I'll use a little bit of a, a reverb amp. So I have a, a Fender uh, Deluxe Reverb that I use. Um, and usually I'll put a little delay and overdrive with it. And a lot of times, if you're not even looking, you might think it's an electric guitar. So it's super fun. Uh, definitely a different voice than what I can have on the acoustic mandolin. So I try to use it as much as I can. vintage mando caster this is a brand new clark octave mandolin that i just got um very recently so it's this is the first tour that i've had it out on and i've been playing it every night and it's just been so fun it's a beautiful instrument quite different than the last time i was here at reverb i have a weber octave that i play as well that's an f style and this has more of the guitar style body as opposed to the mandolin style body but still has the f hole so it's got very low, more like a guitar-like tone about it. So I first started uh, deciding that I wanted to have a different kind of option as far as the tone of the mandolin goes, um, the more I started playing solo. And it can be a wonderful option to use the octave mandolin if you're playing in a lot of solo situations. Um, I made an album that was very stripped down with mostly mandolin and voice. And so I wanted to be able to just have a more guitar-like quality on some of the songs. Um, and that's the wonderful thing about the octave mandolin is it still has that low register that you that you get with the guitar, but all the same mandolin voicings because they're tuned exactly like a, a standard mandolin, G, D, A, and E, but just one octave below. So. 
you get all the mandolin voicings, but um, with a nice low range, that's the perfect accompaniment for singing. Or oftentimes I'll I'll play octave mandolin if I know I'm gonna play a, a duet with another mandolin player. That can be a nice pairing like that together. Um, they're kind of, in some ways, just the perfect instrument. They just have all the mid-range and low range you could want and sustain for days. So there's a few different uh, style mandolins that I personally have and love, and um, it's so fun. I mean, there's mandolas, there's mandocellos, there's electric mandolins, octaves, regular mandolins. They're all great and really fun, and uh, if you become a complete mandolin nerd like myself, then there's a lot of fun stuff to explore, so good luck. <laughs>